Hello, welcome back to the fish locker out on the boat. Now, in a minute, I'm just waiting, <laughs> I'm just killing time really, waiting for the tide. And I'm um, feathering up some bait. I've already had a couple of nice mackerel. Quite a lot of these pilchards. And all I'm using is just some sabikis. They're only really shallow at the minute. They're only maybe about 30 or 40 feet below the boat. I mean, I mean 80 feet. So a third to half the way down. And I'm also fishing just in. I think it's called a Crusader Shad, a Pearl Crusader Shad. And it's a sidewinder lure. Now, I was, uh, I've had some fantastic luck with the sidewinder lures lately. This is a new type. And all I've done is. Uh, <laughs> Almost on cue. <laughs> I just said I just lowered it towards the bottom because these it just feels like a oh, there's a nod. A couple of little nods. Doesn't feel like a bass. It's not a pollock because it hasn't hasn't had a run. Like I was saying, I was just fishing it near the bottom, maybe 10 foot off the... Oh, it's a... Oh, never! Oh. Put the rod down there. It's a codling! There's the shad in its mouth. Let go of it. There, look. Expecting. There you go. See the gannets up over there. They, they know the the pilchers and that are down here. I get a photo of that because I wasn't expecting a cuddling. Yeah, I'm just going to try and feather up a little bit of bait, and then we're going to go down the way. Might stop off on a wreck or two on the way past, and uh, maybe anchor up on the sand. We'll see what we can find. It'd have been all right if it had been three or four times bigger. Cheeky little bugger. <laughs> I like I say, I was fishing it near the bottom, hoping for anything. Bass, Pollock, John Dory, or a codling. <laughs> the area that we're drifting over now is very, very rocky. You can see patches behind me there back that way where there's like a little bit of a calm bit that's a boil that's where the tide has run over a rock it's created like an eddy so the ground that we're drifting over is very much like that now we are drifting in that direction but the wind is coming in this direction so it's holding us back a little bit so although my line although I am drifting in that direction my lines are also going in that direction so all I did was I just cast that lure that way maybe 20 yards, left a bit of line off until it got down below the boat, give it a couple of quick bounces to, rail, to find out if it was near the bottom or not, and then just engage the bail arm and sat it back. So the, the drift, the tide, will hold it up off the bottom a little bit. There's a lot of feed in the water, I can see it on the sound there, there is loads of feed there, but just not getting into it. So it must just be lots and lots of little tiny fish, little tiny sprats or sand eels. You can fish a live bait in the same method as what I'm fishing that lure there. A little sand eel or a little mackerel would be perfect. I thought I would try out some of them shots. As we get to the shallower areas up there that are in like 13, 40 feet, I'll cast it and fish it. Cool fish. Just got heavy. 
<laughs> it was uh, like a little knock like that and it just got heavy. Always kind of crossed my fingers. Fishing live baits and you get a hit and it just gets heavy and then when you bring it up like the back of the head's caved in usually means it's a cool fish if you're uh, if the belly's all all chewed up it's usually a squid or an octopus very carefully try to find the bottom fish come back. I feel like a knock just get heavy. No fighting them until you get them almost to the surface. God knows what that cuttlefish must be thinking. He thinks I keep attacking this and it's not dying. Beak mark, look. See? Cool fish. Missed two real good bites. There. Really annoying when that happens. Oh yeah, switch to switch to a more natural colour. Just trying to mix it up a little bit pretty much as soon as I did there I just got two real good knocks on it all I'm doing is I'm not drifting very fast at all I'm drifting at maybe 0.2 knots so I'm fishing it real close to the bottom just like sink and draw now these lures have an action where you're supposed to fish them relatively fast but the tide's that confused in here And it goes out and then in and then round and all of its spot. We'll push off as well because that boat, of all the ocean, it's one of the things that annoys me. <laughs> he was fishing about half a mile away, saw me come here and he's followed me. Ten more minutes here, and I'll go somewhere else. Same as before, just on a new patch, feathering up a bit of bait. I've got my uh, Crusader shad, just dropping it down now, hoping it gets to near the bottom. I'm latched into something here, hoping it's mackerel. It's a full string of scad. Six scad all at once, look. Now, scad are still good bait. But I don't need six. on them being scad because they hit the second I got the bottom and you do often catch scad right at the bottom mackerel and pilchard you generally catch in the water column you can catch them on the bottom but scad you will usually catch tight on the bottom Plenty of bait now, we'll move down there, see if we can find anything on the sand. I've just started drifting along through a patch of sand. Oh. And I've got 
no solid bites on two rods make that three rods now I was hoping to find a flatfish as in like a dab or a place so I've got running ledgers with some beads and some worm tipped with a little bit of mackerel belly on these two and on that one there I just stuck out a big piece of mackerel just trudging along in case we found small eyed rare blonde rare. I have hooked something on here and on there by the looks of it on here I'm hoping for a dab or a plate and on there I'm expecting a rear now that there it looked like a proper bite I've just got set up I've been drifting for maybe 10 minutes got, got all three rods out just about to turn the camera on that one did a real good lunge like there was a good fish and then just as I turned camera on this one give a nod oh well not what I was wanting but very nice to see nonetheless it's a very nice red garnet there you go see the rig look some beads and a spinner some ragworm tipped with mackerel drop that down over the side quick show of this guy going back that's a shame because that was a really good bite that was like a rake All I've got is just a locked in rolling lead on this. Just a very simple rig. Yeah, look, someone's been pulling at the tail of it. Maybe another gurnet, could be a dogfish. That was it, simple as. Maybe three foot of 40 pound mono with a locked in rolling lead. And it's just. cast out down the way there the trick is to try and keep the rods separate we're drifting in that direction now there's not an awful lot of tide left at the moment we've got wind against tide as soon as the as soon as the tide is finished We'll put the anchor down and see what we can find. Hopefully, find some nice rays. When you're drifting along sand like this, your line wants to be a good distance away from the boat. It wants to be at an angle, not straight up and down. Because the fish you're fishing for are tight on the bottom. They live flat on the bottom. So, I don't know if you can see the rod tip, it should just be trundling like that, just as the lead just bumps along the bottom, doesn't want to be bouncing, just wants to be kind of like skidding along like that. So a watch lead is good for this. Not only because its shape helps it drag along the bottom, but as it drags through the sand and it causes like disturbance, that can attract fish. Now when you do see a rattling bite, give that a little bit, I was just saying when you see a bite, give it a little bit of line. Because if it's a flatfish, it'll be chasing the bait. As you drift along, it'll be chasing after it. And you want to give it a chance to be able to get it in its mouth. So give it some line. And then all you'll do, close the bail arm and let the drift of the boat 
tighten the line. That is a ray, but it's not got it in its mouth. change the bait on that but that's the theory anyway you were uh, once you see like a little rattling bite let out some line count to five count to six depending on how fast you're drifting then engage the bail arm again and as the boat drifts it will tighten the line if you feel that there is a fish on there just lift into the fish don't strike just lift into the fish and if there isn't, carry on your drift. It's getting well and truly battered this now. Fingers crossed. Carry this drift on for another 200 yards. Go back and try it again. Fingers crossed we might be able to find a fish. From time to time when drifting over sand, you will also catch these a little tiny octopus see now it's just snagged it now all that's been happening is this guy's been living in the sand he's been hiding in the sand i just lost one there on the other rod and they just grab hold of it as you go past now you won't get a proper bite and there is zero fight from them all it does is you might get like a little tiny knock and then the, the rod just gets heavy so it just kind of bends over and stays there and all it is is it's just got hold of it and keeping hold of it when you're fishing with a hook Sometimes you land them, sometimes you don't. Oh, what you'll find is just as you're winding in, it'll just get light all of a sudden, and that's just it letting go. It's just threading a couple of ragworms. Like an inch up the hook. Like that. And then tipping it. A tiny slither, tiny slither of mackerel. Now rays, rays do sometimes take a bait on the drift. So what I'll do is I'll just give it a little bit of line. Obviously, as we're drifting, I want, I want to get, I want it to get it in its mouth. currently in 60 feet of water. Close the bail arm, check the drag, let the boat drift, tighten up. Nope. Like I was saying, you want the angle of your line to be going away from the boat far enough so that the rocking and drawling of the boat going around doesn't keep bouncing your leg. Oh, there's a fish. That was a proper little rattler. My guess on that's a little gurnard. I think will probably have me bait away now. But something keeps chasing that one as well. Every now and again you see a good knock. Yeah, I could have me a little piece of have me a little piece of mackerel away. It feels like something's picked this up. It's moving off with it. Drop it 
hell? It's a shame. Let's go and put the anchor down. This is my uptide rig. I'm not going to be fishing a massively uptide just across the tide. And all I've got, look, is it's what's called a bolt rig. And that's that the sliding lead is locked into a piece of about maybe, what's that, one and a half feet? It's called a bolt rig or a self hooking rig. And all that does is it allows you to be able to fish it up into the tide. If you fished a sliding ledger up into the tide, all that would happen was the bait would pull and pull and pull, and you'd end up with it pulling line through the lead, and the lead ended up right upside you, right up, up your main line. Hey, look, it's just a barrel swivel and a length and a clip on there. So all you do is clip your hook length onto there, cast it out. That will bed in like that and sit up against there with your bait down tied of it. When a fish picks it up it will slide and hit and either trip the lead out or pulling against the lead will hook itself. That's the theory behind it. I've got the down tiders, those two tall ones there, fishing on the ratchet so that if, if, something, if something gives a bite you'll hear that audible click. With rays Rays generally you need to give them time to, to take the bait into their mouth properly. Sometimes they'll steam straight in and grab it and move off. Other times they'll, they'll rustle around on top of the bait maneuvering it into their mouth. But if you strike too early they won't have it in their mouth. It's still there sitting on it. Give it a minute. Sometimes what they'll do is they'll just maneuver on top of them and then sit and chomp away and get it in their mouth. In which case you generally have to wait for them to start moving off again. So all I'll wait for now is a pull down bite. Two rods that are out to the sides, the same as if you were fishing an uptider. You're looking for a bounce back bite. So you're looking for a, like, a bite like that and then to the rod to spring up or them just to start heading off down tide. These two up the top you're, you're looking for positive bite. I was hoping that as the flood, as the flood picks up, we'll, um, we'll start seeing some fish. So we're about an hour into the flood now. I'm letting it have a good old chew and a good old bite of it. Try and make sure it gets some. I wondered how long it'd be before someone like <laughs> one of these boys joined the party. You can't have a fishing session without a dogfish, can you? There's the bait. There's the oak. There's the dogfish. <laughs> They're just a menace. Again, the lighter rod. Not a ray. Another annoying little dogfish. Tell you what, he's got some nice markings on him, but he's tiny, <laughs> he's barely out of his head case. What are you going to do, eh? It's just going to be a dogfish party. Maybe another hour and if all we're catching is dogfish we'll, we'll go home. Another 
dogfish. The real pain when they swallow a bait like this. And as soon as you try and start unhooking them, they just regurgitate everything and spew all over your boat. If you can get the eye of the hook out of the fish's mouth like that, you can, you can generally unhook it. Riding around making a nuisance of himself. So make that seven dogfish. Don't even think about it. There you go. I'm not staying here to catch loads of these. We'll, uh, we'll bring these baits in. We'll head back. Stop off on a wreck. Try and uh, feather up some pouting. Go and check the crab pots. That was actually caught on a scad fillet. No, no, that was mackerel, Phil. That was mackerel. Put scad out on that one. Scad's a good bait, it's nice and tough. Start breaking these rigs down. Baby lobster. Oh, and a bullus. A dead crabs, a little lobster, and a bullus. Let's kill that engine. Look at that. There you go. The dark one's got a dark belly and all, isn't he? Straight down. And in this one, the parlour pot. There I see a little baby undersized, little male lobster. Now he's tiny, he's way, way too small, look. But it's still nice to see. Get these pots rebated and get them reshot. Oh! <laughs> 